Welcome to the first episode in a two-part Legendarium series about the life of Katarina Sephorza, a Renaissance warrior woman. Born in 1463 in Milan, Katarina Sephorza became the illegitimate daughter of the cruel and tyrannical Galazio Maria Sephorza, Duke of Milan, and his mistress Lucrezia Landriani. When Caterina turned four years old, the Duke acknowledged her as his daughter and took her into his home to be raised alongside his other children, both legitimate and otherwise. Caterina's father likely acknowledged her because noble children could be used for politically advantageous marriages as they grew older. Thanks to Caterina's stepmother, Bona of Savoy, she received an education centered on Renaissance humanism. Katerina grew into a tall, slim, and blonde girl who had little passion for books but loved writing, hunting, and dancing. Her grandmother, Bianca Maria Visconti, even gave Katerina some training in diplomacy, which served her well later in life. At the age of 10, Katerina's father, Duke Galazio, engaged her to Girolamo Riario. Riario had only one good quality, namely being a nephew of Pope Sixtus IV. Since Riario could not be available in Milan, another man stood in for him at the wedding ceremony alongside 10-year-old Caterina. When Caterina turned 14 years old, she became the wife of Riario, then 33 years old. Tragedy marred the official wedding, for an unknown man murdered her father, Galazio, in December 1476. To this day, it is unknown who murdered her father, the Duke, or why they murdered him. In 1477, Caterina joined her husband in Rome and became the Countess of Forli four years later. Even though she likely did not love her husband, the couple had eight children together. At the age of 19 years old, Sephorza fell victim to quartan fever, a dangerous type of malaria. The illness affected her for the rest of her life, and she hated being weakened by it. Yet this experience likely awakened in her a passion for medicine. Even in times of plague, Katerina thought nothing of truly dangerous tasks. Katerina tended to the poor and sick with food and medicine of her own making. The people became overwhelmed by her kindness and thought highly of her for braving their infected quarters. When Pope Sixtus IV died in 1484, his enemies rioted and nearly destroyed Riorio's family home. Only 21 years old and seven months pregnant at the time, Caterina rallied her husband's troops and seized control of the papal fortress, Castel Sant'Angelo. Her husband, Riario, then agreed to persuade his wife to evacuate the fortress in exchange for a price. First, the cardinals must confirm her family and their estates and give Riario the post of Captain General of the Church. As an extra offer, they gave the family 8,000 ducats in compensation for their family house being ransacked during the riots. After the trouble ended, Caterina and Riario relocated to Romagna to live on their family estates. Unfortunately, Riario soon made a mess of things, raising taxes and seizing properties when people failed to pay. This triggered several uprisings, which Caterina suppressed by capturing the leading rebels, chopping off their heads, and using them to decorate pikes in the city square. Nonetheless, attempts on Riario's life continued, and thankfully one finally succeeded. In 1488, a group of rebels led by the Orsi brothers murdered Girolamo Riario. The rebels then took Caterina's mother, two of her half-sisters, and one of Riario's illegitimate children as hostages. However, the rebels failed to get their hands on the most dangerous member of the Sephorza family, Caterina, in time. Before her own arrest, Caterina asked her uncle in Milan to ready her castle and not give it to the conspirators under any circumstances. 
Her uncle passed the word along to the Castellan Domaso Feo. When the conspirators approached with the Sephora family in tow, he gave a reply frosty as winter wind. Feo declared that the Orsi brothers would not dare harm Caterina for fear that her brother, now the Duke of Milan, would punish them. With the conspirators thwarted, for now, Caterina told her captors that if they let her into the castle, she would talk Domaso Feo into surrendering. Since the conspirators kept control of Katerina's children, they agreed and allowed her inside. Once there, Katerina shouted from the parapets that the conspirators had a choice between surrender and death. They claimed they would murder her children if she did not come back, and she declared, Do it! If you want to, hang them even in front of me. She then lifted her skirts and shouted, Here's, I have what's needed to make others. Her response shocked the Orsi brothers, and they dared not harm her children. Thereafter, Katerina, with the help of her uncle, sought out the conspirators and their families, and all of them paid a high price in blood and tears for their treason. Following Girolamo Riario's death, Katerina became the regent for her oldest son, Ottaviano. She took advantage, and even after the boy came of age, she ruled in his place. She embarked on several successful military and political campaigns, including marriage negotiations and gifts with neighboring states. Her family also became involved in some of the great cultural efforts of the age. Sephora's uncle Ludovico Il Moro befriended none other than Leonardo da Vinci and even brought da Vinci to Milan. During his time there, da Vinci painted one of his most famous works, The Last Supper. As she expanded Milan's power, some thought Caterina Savorza would take the powerful Antonio Maria Ordolaffi as her second husband. However, when Ordolaffi started getting overconfident and spread the news that they would marry, Savorza taught him a brutal lesson. Caterina started arresting anyone who spread the false news of her impending marriage, including Ordolaffi, who spent 10 years in prison. So will anybody be bold enough to marry Katarina Sforza? We'll find out in part two. That wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.